Welcome back to the Making Team Projects Work video series. I'm Tim Franz, and I'm here with Lauren Vicker, and I can't wait to hear what Lauren has to talk about today, because today we're going to talk about team presentations, her area of expertise. And this is especially timely because for us academics, it's the end of the semester, and many of our teams are going to be doing team presentations. Lauren? Thanks so much, Tim. Today, we're gonna to be talking about seven tips for better team presentations. So tip number one is make sure you practice the presentation together as a team. You can't just practice your individual parts because some of the things that are important are making sure that you actually time the segments and know how long people are going to be speaking. And we can't tell you how many times We've had one person do talking for way more of the time and the team actually running out of time. You also need to watch for any kind of overlap or repetition that you're going to have in the content of the material. And so practicing together as a team will help to eliminate that. You know, Lauren, I when I practice alone, I find that stuff and as a team, <laughs> It, it's even more important. That's a great tip. Tip number two is introduce yourself and the members of the team or get just one person to do it. Make sure that that person is comfortable introducing everyone, knows everyone's name, and is able to give kind of an overview of what's going to be happening. You know, that makes it sound so much smoother when one person does those introductions. Absolutely. And you can use the introduction to preview the content and how the team will present it. So rather than just introducing the team and the topic, you can say, I'm going to be talking about some of the background of our project, and then I'm going to turn it over to Tim, who's going to talk about our research, and then Michaela is going to come here and, and show you our data analysis, and I'll be back at the end to talk about our findings and conclusion. That way, your audience has a perceptual set as to what's going to happen in the presentation, it makes it easier for them to follow along and understand what you're talking about. Absolutely. It gives them that frame of reference, that cognitive schema for really your audience, what's coming and helps them to understand the presentation better. Yes. And along with that, it's important when you practice to make sure that you plan clear transitions between the speakers. So rather than just one person, they're finished, they stop talking, and they kind of look around and wait for the next person to start speaking. It's better to say, now that I've given you an overview of the project, I'm going to turn it over to Tim, who's going to talk about the research behind our project. And that way, people are again able to follow along much more easily. And for students, I think what I see is when they do this, it minimizes the questions. And I know many of them don't want the questions from the instructor later in the QA session. Um, and this minimizes the questions because they're following along, stepping in order, which really helps the audience again. Great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So number five is to make sure that your presentation slides all follow the same format. We've had people very frequently just do the slides that relate to their part of the presentation. And then there isn't a uniform look. So make sure that even if you do your own slides, that one person is responsible for putting them all together, making sure that they follow the same format, same design, same background, and of course, checking for any typos or errors that are on those slides. Yeah. It makes it seem unified when I see that and, and so disjointed when students just jam their slides together at the last minute. Yes, absolutely. We know that all members need to be available for and participation in the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So make sure that you discuss beforehand what questions may arise and who's going to cover those. Very frequently, we've seen one person just jump in and answer all the questions. And that, again, doesn't make it seem like a team presentation. So make sure that you are all available and engaged in the Q&A. 
Yeah, I've had, uh, you know, it's the hardest thing for some of those really active and vocal yeah. team members to just step back and trust their others to be able to answer the question. So I, I think that's a great tip, Lauren. Number seven is something that we feel very strongly about. And you should practice from the first day you're assigned the team project. And that is using what we call team speak, which means refer to the project and everyone involved in terms of we and not I. So rather than saying, when I did the data analysis, I found this, we say, when we did the data analysis, this is what we found. Even if I was responsible for the data analysis, it shows that it was a team effort, that it was cohesive, and it also helps the entire team take responsibility for the project, uh, for the good as well as for some of those weak points that instructors might notice. <laughs> that, you know, that's always, I, I know we've had this conversation, and that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, that I did this, I did that. It's a team presentation. You're working together as a team. Another great tip, Lauren. Uh, we provide a lot more information on our website. And I, I'm going to give credit to Lauren again here. We have an appendix in our book that goes into lots of detail about team presentations that Lauren primarily wrote that uses this and a lot more information to help teams make better presentations in the classroom. So I know I use this information in my classrooms and I'm going to give a little preview. Next week, we have five tips for Zoom presentations. My teams are doing this in part because my teams are presenting remotely this semester to clients who are all over, ranging from Indiana to New York State. So uh, it has to be a Zoom presentation. Lauren, any final words? Just check out the full blog post at the link below this video. And thanks so much for joining us. And thank you, Tim. Thanks, Lauren.